Hello again my good YouTubers, here is another quick uh, tutorial explanation video on the use flags, what we use as use flags in Gentoo. Um, and uh, as I say, as a follow on as promised with the rest of the videos, we shall continue to um, explain exactly what we do inside the package.use file. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, what looks like a lot in here, but in fact, there's actually not because if you actually look, most of it is all um, commented out comments here, which were actually put in by the emerge auto unmask uh, parameter of uh, emerge, which allows for a lot of these elements to be entered here automatically depending on what emerge is actually asking you to do. Um, now the briefly, obviously the rules, same as what was previously put in the videos, uh, apply the same to the use uh, config file as it does to the others. In this um, uh, obviously instances or whatever as you can see we've got the greater than or equal to sign so basically this greater than and equal to is meaning greater than or equal to the current version that is specified here um, but obviously as I say that is just basically to define which package what version whether you do specify a version as you can see up here there is actually it doesn't matter about the version which you've got the virtual box module um, followed by the specific use flag which is exactly what we're going to talk about so we can just briefly mention these um, again you can see in my previous videos uh, a more detail to what these actually you know are but just for the sake of completeness uh, obviously the forward arrows pointing to the right generally mean the version to be greater than uh, the equal is obviously equal to the version that is specified and obviously if there is an arrow pointing to the left then that obviously means that it would be versions less than the specified version that um, is typed in here afterwards. Um, on to the crux of this file we are talking about use flags. Now very much like with the make.conf file uh, we use these use flags to tell individual packages what elements can be enabled or disabled. Um, what we mean by enabled and disabled in Gentoo, we actually mean compiled with or compiled without. So the program will either be built with uh, support for the option or will not be built with support of the option. Um, as you can see in here, for instance, the first one which has no version, we are building the VirtualBox modules specifically without. Because of the minus sign, this means that without. If there was no minus sign, it means to be built with. Um, but we are building it without PAX kernel support. Um, obviously, VirtualBox um, could be built with PAX kernel support. Um, but in my case, uh, I am not building it with PAX kernel support. Um, but it could be, and this is this is this is the you know the case in dilemmas that um, if we look down, uh, there could be certain instances. Uh, see if we can find one in here that. Uh, you know, particularly shows uh, shows a good example of this. But the uh, see here static libs. See this is this is actually enabling static libs. Um, oddly, in uh, the global configuration across the entire of the packages that are I normally set in the make.conf, static libs is uh, not something I enable by default. Um, static libraries is generally disabled um, but in these cases these specific packages that you can see highlighted obviously we were selecting this highlighted in the yellow actually need static libs to be compiled to support these individual packages so we use the package.use file 
to specifically enable for versions like in this case here for versions greater than or equal to 1.0.10-R1 we enable static libs as default um, same as with um, the libjpeg turbo up here and zlib and so on and so forth with the others now they, they by defining this in the use flags only stat the static libraries option will be compiled with these listed packages they will not be compiled with uh, the static list will not be compiled to other packages that are installed um, with the good thing about package auto unmask is it gives you a brief description of exactly what um, it's enabling this the static libraries and why it's doing it and obviously here it's basically stating that it's required by the media graphics splash utils which is the um, utilities that load your um, boot up splash images um, and it's as I say it's required uh, particular by those to enable static libs into these modules so that media graphics splash utils can work because it relies on these so portage helps you out and in a sense automatically helps define uh, many of the elements that might seem a little dawning to you know non-developers of these packages um, even the most experienced gen 2 users you know don't know every single package and every single um, you know, piece of software, uh, you know, on the system. As I say, I mean, on my system, there's there's there's, there's nearly two thousand or over two thousand actual packages, libraries, shared libraries, headers, um, etc. So, you know, knowing each one of those two thousand uh, as a single individual, a single person, is quite a lot to ask for. So. Um, developers who do, who are working, let's say, for instance, on the, the PNG libraries, will know which is needed to which. And obviously, the developers of Splash Utils understand how they've programmed Splash Utils to work and how they need it to use the libpng. So therefore, they can particularly specify the static libs in that sense to 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 define that. So it makes your life easier. Um, so this is generally what the 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 package uses. It's a very powerful. It's probably it's the it's the last, probably least most used, but actually one of the most powerful of the um, uh, you know the uh, the use files because it's it's like if we look down here, we have um, KDE libs MLT, which basically means that point, versions point zero point nine point zero is going to be built with K and live support and melt support um, because obviously as I say we I use Caden live on here um, and uh, you know I want this to be built with it but I don't necessarily want um, support to be built globally for instance again this was added by the auto unmask so it generally assumes because it's, it's, it's an automatic it generally assumes that putting them as individual cases in here is actually better than modifying the make.conf file for setting them globally because if you set them globally it may be not what you want you might not want it to be globally set you might just want it just to get one application working uh, and one application you know supported so therefore it puts them in the package use file which then only enables it for that specific uh, application or that specific uh, package um, and in this case as we see here it enables Caden live support with melt support for the MLT uh, libraries so that they're built with the support for these two so that Caden live when it's eventually built and installed uh, you know is it knows to use it and it can use the MLT interface for you know its its, its graphic system um, if you are happy in putting these as a global to have the entire system built with them, then you would, in a sense, delete this and then put Caden Live and Melt in your make.conf use flags. And then everything that you build on the system will include support for Caden Live and Melt. 
that's basically what it is so the package use is a way of extracting even further more control and more definition um, uh, from the uh, make.config file and the packages that you install on the system um, so that's basically all the package use is it's there's really not much else to it it is actually quite that simple um, and to understand quite to how to do it you you basically need to just get stuck in and understand how the use flags work we will discuss more about how the use flags and everything else come up in uh, a next video which I'm going to do on the emerge program and we're going to be actually covering in the terminal screen how emerge behaves its options uh, the parameters you can put in there the difference between emerging system and world including individual packages and understanding how the uh, use flags are shown and what the abbreviations are for each module um, obviously that uh, crosses into that video you see so we won't go too you know too far into that quite in this video this is obviously just to cover the package use um, uh, file configuration file and then we can move on to actually doing the actual emerge program and protocols um, for doing your system so that should do, as I say this is a nice brief simple video just about the package used to give you a good idea of again how the use flags work and specify for individual packages that you want to define um, obviously as I say it's like you know here's, here's a use flag that is, is not you know um, globally set for me which is the Ruby targets Ruby 20 I mean personally I don't use uh, Ruby which is a programming language um, or scripting language I don't use Ruby um, but it's required by um, certain elements of programs that other people have programmed that um, obviously require Ruby so therefore Ruby has to be installed and therefore that is that is basically what this is this is stating here and again as you can see with the arrows it means greater than or equal to the version 2.0.3 will be built with support Ruby underscore targets underscore Ruby 20 or 2.0 um, that's basically uh, the simplest way of understanding the package use configuration um, if you haven't checked out the previous videos on package keywords uh, package mask and unmask and the make.config file I suggest you do so because a lot of the areas in here are actually covered in those videos uh, I'm just, you know, speaking about these individual things just to make this video as complete as possible. Um, but yeah, anyway, my good YouTubers, that's uh, that's it for this video, and uh, I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks a lot, and take it easy as always.